Having a great booster executive board and slate of officers is a must for setting the mission and communicating your purpose with the membership and stakeholders. But let's face it, your servant volunteers make all the difference. As an educator, do you feel like there's too much work and not enough time to get everything done? Boy, I sure did. And the same is really probably true for the booster clubs, right? If you sometimes struggle getting enough volunteers, I have three pathways to building more volunteers I'd like to share with you. So grab some tea or the caffeine of your choice and let's dive in. Hey there, if we're just meeting for the first time, I'm David Vandewalker, and it's my joy to be with you for just a few moments. What a pleasure it is to have you join us to have this discussion about finding and building a volunteer army. Having members is a must for any booster club, but having an army of active volunteers is vital for a thriving booster club. Volunteers contribute to your cause and are a great human resource asset for your organization. We need their talent their skills and time to support the various projects, events, or performances of your program. You may be asking yourself, well, how do I boost my volunteer recruitment strategy? Well, the ultimate goal is to gather an army of like-minded, like-missioned people to join you in your journey for providing enrichment experiences for the benefit of your students. If people believe in your mission, They'll volunteer to serve and help without needing to be asked. So we have three essential tasks in our objectives. One, to establish the purpose, values, and mission of the organization. Two, create a culture of excellence that thrives on delivering the purpose to the community. And three, providing parents with brave spaces to begin participating in the mission firsthand. For this gathering, let's explore three pathways for strategizing solutions for the third task, providing parents brave spaces to begin participating in the mission firsthand. For years, I've provided leadership training focusing on the importance of creating safe spaces for both students and parents. Recently, I've had the pleasure of collaborating with a wonderful consultant and educational speaker, Ken Shelton. Ken introduced me to a poem by Mickey Jones entitled, An Invitation to a Brave Space. If you're not familiar with the poem, I've left a link to it in the description section below. The poem begins by stating, Together we will create brave space. And the overarching theme of the work provides a framework for creating a space where all people find true belonging. And that's 100% applying to both the classroom and booster organizations. The work has heightened my awareness that there's really no genuinely safe space for all. What space one person feels safe in does not mean that another will find that same space safe based on their lived experiences. I reflected on that poem through many different lenses. And as it relates to our topic of belonging within a parent organization, For a student or parent to have such a sense of belonging that they become empowered to be brave is exactly the culture we wish to create. A culture of excellence where parents are feeling belonging and brave in action to make a difference by volunteering and serving to support the students in your program. The first pathway for engaging parents in a first-hand experience is creating a pathway for connections. As a Booster Club board member or project chair, I want to encourage you to take intentionality seriously. We need you to be intentional in making connections in your parent community. Explore ways to carve out time for board members and project chairs to connect with members, especially the parents of new students to your program. Maybe your section liaisons could have a 15-minute Zoom call with new parents in their child's section to introduce them as a parent whose kid does the same thing your kid does. Have them share a few positive purpose and mission statement testimonies in their story as it relates to their experiences in band or in your program and invite them to ask any questions about the program. Or 
Maybe you host an old-fashioned potluck dinner for the next booster club meeting or concert performance where parents and students sit at assigned tables by section to facilitate connection moments. Again, linking opportunities for parents to meet other parents whose kid does the same thing their kid does. Another way to create connection points would be to have members of your booster board serve as a greeter at the end of a marching band rehearsal this month and say hello to parents in the pickup line after rehearsal. So the first pathway for your consideration in building a strong parent volunteer base is building connection. The second pathway for building an army of volunteers is through experiences. In our present society, people are seeking experiences. You don't just go to watch a movie anymore. You have a food and film extravaganza with recliners and personal service providers. And people just don't have a wedding anymore. They have a destination wedding experience. And on and on it goes, right? So the question becomes, how can we create a pathway building on our connections and engaging parents through the experiences we build for our students? And if one of your goals is to increase parent volunteer engagement, maybe you need to create some special experiences for the big kids too. Do you have a prop crew or loading crew? Those groups are typically the most engaged team in any band booster club. Why? Because they have a ton of experiences together building and moving stuff, right? Maybe you create a Friday night tailgate party where parents gather with food in the parking lot before the band marches over to the stadium. Or you invite a food truck to a late season rehearsal and market it to the feeder program community as a performance experience where people gather for food, have the percussion ensemble perform for creating some ambiance. Maybe you have the elementary ORF ensemble come set up a stage. Then you could feature the color guard with some stand tunes in a standstill performance followed by the competitive show run through and a demonstration with the directors talking to the audience through the show and explaining different parts about it and let the kids perform multiple runs to entertain the crowd. It's really a great way to kind of teach your parents when to yell and scream and hoopla, right? <laughs> it's an experience where people can gather to engage in your mission and possibly develop an intrinsic desire to help along in the journey. The third pathway is relationships. In the best-selling book, Strength-Based Leadership by Tom Rath, he shares data presented through a meta-analysis of thousands of data points on what people reported as to the basic needs an individual must have met before they become a genuine follower or volunteer in this application. The top four answers were trust, compassion, stability, and hope. Think about your own entry point into the booster organization. There's a strong probability that you had a connection or relationship with another parent you trusted that pulled you in into becoming an active volunteer in the booster club. So here's the deal. You can't create trust, compassion, stability, or hope with another person unless you have a connection with them through relationship building. So this third pathway for building an army of volunteers involves stacking of the first two pathways. You make connections and provide experiences that have a cumulative effect over the course of the semester or school year. So act now. Make the opportunity to elevate those connections into relationships with one or two parents in the organization. That's how we build it, one or two at a time. Think about the possibilities. What could happen if every member on your board, along with your project team leaders, intentionally developed one or two new relationships with new parents? What kind of impact could that make on your volunteer base? And what if each one of them brought someone they already have a trust relationship with alongside them too. That would create a very powerful bump in your volunteer base. So the final step is to make this strategy part of your booster leadership system for volunteer growth and retention. And before you know it, you'll have a volunteer army empowered to make a difference for the students in your program. Thanks for spending time with us in Tea with Dr. V. If you found this information insightful or helpful, I hope you hit the like button or subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out the description below. I've left you there a free gift just for hanging out and spending some time with us. Until next time, be strategic 
and turn your potential into performance.